Hello and welcome to my house. <laughs> we finally made it. Well, I made it. We made it. Um, <clears throat> hello, everyone. We have some, I think we have some explaining to do um, well, um, before we... <laughs> well, the main word here tonight is Philomena. 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 Such a pretty old lady's name <laughs> for such an annoyingly wonderful storm. So I don't know if any of you, well, I'm sure you have. Uh, I don't know where you're watching this from, whether you're in Madrid, whether you're in the UK or any other country, but you may have seen in the news that Madrid is currently more like Moscow. <laughs> so <clears throat> for about, well, we had the Christmas period, so obviously we did not do a tasting in the Christmas period because Christmas. And then as soon as that finished, we we're like, right, time to start the, oh, what, a big storm. <laughs> Philomena arrived and only today have they managed to start very inconsistent local train so I was yeah. able to come here yeah. and Roque has been stuck because I live in the suburbs and uh, well my street have been, has been blocked for these days so we had to postpone one and one more the tasting yeah and I was and here we are here we are <laughs> this is much better much much uh, cozier yeah we have less books in the shop <laughs> um, <clears throat> now so, um, Fabio welcome here. everybody. Uh, we uh, had chosen a street wine for, you know, welcome this new year. It was supposed this to be was near to... Christmas. <laughs> it, yeah, and we hope it was, it was going to be, uh, you know, a completely different year. We want to forget 2020. It would be such a well, really positive start. But from the creators of 2020, here oh, it comes. The sequel. <laughs> here it comes, 2021. It's, it's just like... It's a lot like Die Hard, because the second <laughs> Die Hard film was all really snowy. It was just as good. But uh, do you know what, what, what people used to say about uh, second parts? It's usually better. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Hi, Fabio. Dad's here. Greg, great, great. Hi, um, everybody. So, yes. Now, of course, given the circumstances of where we are, we are currently today lacking a couple of physical things. Um, for example, the prizes um, for our the previous box, um, we uh, haven't got it with us because I could not bring a five litre bottle of wine with me. <laughs> but at some point <laughs> we will... the price will... of the new mouth. Yes, exactly. Um, so we haven't got the physical premios, the prizes for, last, for the last month. Also, I don't have the map with me. I also don't have the tasting sheet with me, but those of you who bought it, you know the process. We can we can still go through it here. So the same format will be the same. I'll just be less visual. We can, I can start to show you uh, Roque's books instead. But anyway, so now we have got a prize for this month as well, which we'll talk about shortly. But um, as we always ask, if you want to win prizes, uh, as we'll do in a moment, showing you who won the last. A month all you have to do is take a photo of your tasting that's it so today we're drinking a px all you have to do is take a photo of the wine yeah put it on your instagram put it on your twitter put it on donald trump's twitter feed <laughs> whoops <laughs> not anymore um as long as we see it we'll put your name in the running for whatever you're going to win so we'll talk about more of that in a minute have we got the uh well, we, uh, I need the list of oh, yes, people. Oh, yes, right. I've got my list one here. one minute is will be... We need here. to do this live. So, here it is. So, thank you. I don't know if you remember, but if you go to any of the last uh, seven, no, six tastings, you will remember that there were two prizes available. One was a visit to one of our favorite bodegas in a nearby wine region of Mentrida. It was called Bodegas Arrayan. We actually did one of their wines. Uh, we did their Petit Verdot. And if you win, you will be given a free private visit to the winery, which is pretty yep. sweet. The other, <laughs> the other prize, which is the one I was not able to bring on the snowy streets of Madrid because I was slipping everywhere, was a five liter. I still don't know how I'm going to get this to anybody. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Josue can take it for us. But um, it's a five liter bottle of El Primero. And Primero is essentially Spain's answer to the Beaujolais, the new... Uh, young wine of the year. So if you've got any big parties coming up or you're a fantastic alcoholic, it's the perfect bottle. Um, so to win those two things, all we, these people had to do was to put 
photos on and as long as we well, see them we put them i am on. ready Have you got the names there yes do you want to know the winner okay three so we had various people <gasps> three two one Ulrich. it's Ulrich. Ulrich. Uh, so. a man and, and man from stockholm i think Ooh. so Ulrich lundberg um, he's a fantastic drunk <laughs> um and yeah he uh he actually lives nearby so maybe he can come pick it up in oh, person that's good so Ulrich, i'll send you a little text tomorrow and you'll get it now thank god he doesn't um, live in malaga or, or in la gomera so dad is trying to uh is trying to tell oh maybe we're not live yet what oh hang on people can't see us Give me a second. People aren't seeing us right now. Uh, are we live? Yes, we should be. That is the live. Yeah. Um, apparently, we are live. <laughs> Our end. I'm just. I'm just live chatting. You to are. You. And uh, Ana Martinez Abarca says you are. You are live. Our end. Uh, we have been <laughs> for eight minutes. Hmm, that's weird. Um, Thank you, Anna. Can anyone see us? This is weird. Yes. Um, so Anna can see us, but I can't see Anna's comment here. Had problems getting Are through. Are live now. No. Oh. This is uh, very confusing because hmm. we can see your chat. Okay, this is really confusing. <laughs> uh, well, what do we do, Rocky? Do we carry I, I on? I had problems getting through. Uh, well, I suppose, I mean, there is a streaming that is working right now. I can see the image. Uh, there are people in that chat. There is a, there is a difference of... Uh, Nine minutes. <laughs> you on air. Okay. Apparently we're on air. Okay. Kevin and Anna can watch us. And some people can't. <laughs> can't. So. Uh, Should we just carry on? Yeah. I mean, I suggest the people who cannot see us to. Uh, refresh. Refresh or. Oh, my God. So, I mean, this is weird. Refresh question mark. <laughs> Some people can see us. Or go to our uh, web channel, you know, the, the channel page of the in YouTube and enter there or re enter the, the live tasting. I mean, this is weird. Uh, this is weird. Philomena. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Philomena. Yeah. Um, well, what should we do? Should we carry on? We should. I mean, I, there's nothing, nothing we can do. We can do, actually. Um, so if you can see us, I can read. There are four people connected. Uh, okay, okay. So the people who, who can watch us, there are only four people. But in the other one, there are eight. Yeah. This is so. very strange. Mm -hmm. Hit the notification. That's how I got There on. are now five. Um, uh, hit the notification. Five now. Five. <laughs> <laughs> this is fascinating for you lot. Hit the notification, question mark. <laughs> I don't understand at all. This is like two things at once. Well, for the people who are here, should we open some wine? Because we can't yes. do anything else. <laughs> uh, oh, no. I huh. think some people are on the wrong one. Hang on a minute. Did we start? No, this is correct. Yeah. Oh, well. Let's 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 carry on. That works. Go to channel page. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, carry on. Yes. Go. I'm gonna tell my dad. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> go to the channel. Thank you, page. guys. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. It's classic, classics <laughs> snowstorm. <laughs> Thank you, Anna, for. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we just talked to ourselves for eight minutes without any help. Okay. So. Um, Let's go for let's go and drink some of the wine, Jesus please. Christ. Well, this is snow cold. Snow temperature. Yeah. 
So those of you who may uh, may have just joined us again, uh, you've not missed anything important. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, just the, the classic introduction. Yeah, the, you just missed me introducing stuff. So, so Fabio says classic Madrid and classic Darrocott. You've missed <laughs> nothing. Don't worry. We haven't drunk anything yet. We haven't introduced the wine. We've just been doing the usual uh, housekeeping. I'm, I'm hot now because I'm <laughs> freaking out. All right, everyone, shut calm, up. Calm down. <laughs> calm down and, and have a drink. drink wine. So welcome to our first. <laughs> welcome to the first. Well, so 2021 tastings. Yeah. Um We'll be here as often as we can. Um, and once again, we have a new box for this new month. And this box, we've got a couple of classics. Yep. We've also got a couple of kookier wines. But we're going to start off with a classic. So, the hell are we drinking? Well, today... You get, get your pretty photos up. This is your, this is your <laughs> the, job. The, today we are going to start the 2021 with a sweet wine. A classic Pedro Jimenez from Jerez. Uh, I know Jerez is a very important designation of origin for the look, uh, but it's not probably this the, the kind of wine he loves from that region. Yeah, but because we have had the Electrico not long ago, mm -hmm. so it was a moment to visit Jerez, but in another completely different kind of wines. Yeah, so uh, so for those of you who are just seeing us and are wondering what the hell's going on, just to reconfirm, we're in Roque's flat because ice because. <laughs> no transport, because anyway. So yes, we're going to start um, with a bottle of wine called Vigna 98, which is that one there. Um, Vigna 98 is from Bodegas, well, Alvaro Domecq. Now, um, we have done sherry before. So this is, I'm not going to try, I'm going to try not bore you too much with the process of all the sherries, but I will mention them. Um, but the PX is a little bit different, um, but it is the, probably the sh style of sherry that's most famous in the UK and uh, in America, which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, but first of all, we need to go through the tasting notes as usual. Um, now, we have to fulfill a little bit the main data. So name of the wine, Viña 98. I don't know why it's called 98. 98. Because the bodega was taken over by Alvaro in 1999. Right. So maybe that's when it started, maybe. Hopefully it's a year and not centimeters. Oh, God, <laughs> we still got the terrible jokes. That's good to see. Um, grape, 100% Pedro Jimenez, of course, um, which is obviously key because those clever drunks around you might remember that most sherry is not made with Pedro Jimenez, it is instead made with the grape Palomino Fino. But in this case, you have two other grapes that you can often find in the sherry areas. One is Moscatel and one is Pedro Jimenez, which are used to make the sweet one. So 100% Pedro Jimenez. And what year is it? There is no year. Dum, 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 dum. Oh, I, I want my ear. I can't keep <laughs> writing any, uh, not applicable. I in need the an ear. So again, similar to the Montilla Marillas when we did, and again, we'll mention it when we talk a bit about the process. No vintages usually on sherry, and that's the same for the sweet ones. Um, so there's no vintage. The alcohol content is pretty tasty though. This is 15% alcohol. So you've got quite a nice uh, <laughs> way to warm up yes. uh, today. Um, this is nowhere near the strongest styles of sherry. They can be. Um, again, in a moment, I'll talk about how you make a sherry and then a rocket will get bored and everyone will turn off. But this is not, this is kind of the same as a Fino or Manzanillas. It's not a super, super strong one. Um, oh, look, people, hang on. Um, Erkan, I'm enjoying a Barbadillo Oloroso tonight, 18%. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's a stronger one. Um, so this is nowhere near up to that strength. Um, so, anything else we need to mention about uh, this? Uh, yeah, the the producer is Al oh yeah, Alvaro Al Domec. Alvaro Domec is um, uh, you may know one the name of the Domec. Yeah, the Domec is a, is like a legendary a family name in yeah. in sherry, it's but also is linked to horses, linked oh, to yeah. pork, to habugo. Link linked to horses, you say? <laughs> linked to I mean to bullfighting, yeah, yeah. which is we'll talk about later. It's basically all of the. All of the stereotypes of Spain. <laughs> Domek. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, if I mean, you want to remind 
your Christmas. Yeah, it's here. a shame because usually my mum and I have this a glass of this Christmas. This is how Christmas tastes. My mum had, I gave this my mum last year, this bottle. Although it had a different label. Um, this, this is, is Christmas, This yeah. is what Santa Claus tastes if you squeeze him. Do <laughs> Which bit of him? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. The soul. <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh God. It's a symphony of sweetness. Whoa. Well, first of all, the colour. First, everyone, chill color? out. Colour? Colour. Brown. Treacle. It's, it's yeah, called, it's brown. Like it's almost ebony. And ivory. They were living Ebony, perfect. right? It's, it's red, right? Yeah, yeah. It just it's like the, but that dark wood, right? It just reminded me of a very uh, cheesy Paul McCartney <laughs> song called Ebony. And ivory. It's all about like, hey, black and white people can be friends. I, I, you know, I don't like Paul McCartney. He's weird. But he's from Liverpool, so sort of the Beatles. I, I don't like. And I, the only I like Christmas the Carol I hate is from him. Which one? He's on loads. Oh, the one. Mistletoe uh, and wine. Children. No, no, no. One is that uh, I actually I banned it from the from the Spotify. I wonder why show. it was never on. <laughs> oh. okay. It's the only song banned in our Spotify, which is. Impressive, because you play some absolute crap. <laughs> right. Very, very brown, treacly colour. There's mm. a reason for that, because these are, this is made with grapes. This is not... This is still quite a bright brown. You can't really see there. But sometimes these can be, when they're very old, black. Mum says she wants another bottle. All right, yes, I'll bring... <laughs> I'll tr when I, whenever I can come home, I'll bring you three. <laughs> so, uh, you'll also notice, when you swirl it, it, I don't know if it sticks to the sides. You can see there. Yeah, it's, pol it's pure syrup. Pure syrup. So not only is it visually brown, it's also visually very, well, very sweet. So it's going to be clinging onto the sides Maybe of the glass. Maybe you can do it in your face. Yeah. That's what my, my forehead looks like this after I play badminton. Yeah. Right, get your nose in. <sighs> I love the, I mean, dates. Date, dates. 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 Figs. Treacle. Figs. Golden syrup, molasses, all these kind of things. Yeah. Molasses. Mm. It's a little bit of like a Christmassy cinnamony spice or something, but that may be the what image. What do you smell here? <laughs> if anyone has this wine. <laughs> <laughs> we are following along with what we could find at Alvear Slayer 1920. Well, that's better, David. <laughs> I mean, no offense to this, but like, well, come on. That's like doing a Criantha, I don't know, yeah. uh, Ithadian. So, oh, I've got a Grand Reserva Vignette on Donia. Like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. He's 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 eating caviar while we are like, having tuna salad. This carb is great. We're having Dom Perignon. How are you guys? Thanks, David. <laughs> Prunes, yeah. Prunes, yeah. It's all the sweetness. It's all the the aromas that you get from grapes, but raisins. You know, not. It's, it reminds me of the little packets. So you we, you won't have these in Spain. Any Brits out there might remember that. Well, they're still going. Little red packets of sun-made. Uh, raisins. It reminds you of that. Oh, okay, I have, I have here. Have oh, you got some raisins? Yeah, yeah. So it reminds you when you just crack the box open. You go... Okay, he's having cheese on toast. That's pretty baller. <laughs> uh, 1926, 1927 PX from Monte Mariles with cheese on toast. But yeah, so you're going to get all these kind of concentrated, gummy, sun dried aromas because. This is made with essentially raisins. Now I don't know what Rocky is doing, but um, if any of you are there drinking this particular wine, what are you doing? These little things. Did you take mm -hmm. all that time just to show people what raisins are? Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to make the. Come on. Yeah. You right? It's just, it's just that. This is mus muscat raisins. It's just that. With, yeah. With brandy in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good. Isn't that's it? true. Let yeah, me go again. This actually does smell more like Moscatel. Yeah, it smells Moscat. Right, have a tasty taste. Oops. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Mm. It's creamy and it's oh. thick. It's like oil. Yeah. Mm. I don't usually like PX that much, but this one's great. It's not too sweet, this one, to be honest. It's, it's not too sweet. <laughs> com compared to what you can get. Compared to what you can get. We would get. talk about that later. Yeah. Um, because we have a very good question from Fabio about levels of sugar in drinks. So if anyone has any questions, by the way, yes. please do write Don't them Don't be in. shy. So it's very sweet, very persistent. 
it covers the palate and it lingers for a long time. It's not super high in acidity. We're not talking about a uh, like a Sautern or a mm, fancy Tokai. These wines are not going to be like, oh, my mouth is watering. They're not that acidic. They're not flabby, but they're not crisp. We're looking at quite a, you said it, yeah, syrupy, creamy style yeah. of very excessively sweet wine. So, what temperature? Oh, well, I like it cold. Yeah, I like it quite chilled. Yeah. Um, Actually, this is snow temperature, not for long, because mm. Luke is here since one hour not, ago. Not snow temperature. That's zero degrees. <laughs> but uh, I, I was mean, like, you, I was you like, cannot, quick, you rocket, freeze get, this. get it out of the fridge. He was like, it it's would not never, in the fridge. It would never be freeze this frozen no. because it's because of the alcohol and the sugar and the sugar yeah will not be frozen so we just chuck this in the snow outside um oh craig delicious how well done <laughs> well done craig <laughs> um so yes if you have any questions please write them um glass now that we had a little debate yes what glass because actually it has been a strong arg argue here. we broke things yeah <laughs> They used to have a window. You, this, you mean this glass? You son of a bitch! Now. You want it now? <laughs> you want it here? Um, because it's tricky because it's it's very aromatic, but it's almost so aromatic that it doesn't matter yeah. what glass it's And in. also, you will never drink a big amount <laughs> big of this. Glass. No. So, and please, please, do not finish the bottle today <laughs> or you will have a terrible headache tomorrow morning. You know, or do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. You don't care. You do what you want. Twenty-one. You know, David's having a very expensive bottle of wine with some cheese on toast. You drink whatever you want to drink. But we went for the big bowl one because at least you can get the aromas. But yep. most Pedro Jimenez in most countries, whether for good or bad, are served in the little sherry glasses. Um, sometimes they're the open ones, which yep. are the terrible ones, which I wish didn't exist. But those little catador. Yes, and yeah, I think that's the, the, very small. Yeah. yeah, and that's probably enough. Um, but yeah. Pairing, pairing this wine. Well, obviously with grapes. Obviously, this this is a wine you can pair with any dessert because this wine it's a dessert itself. Yeah. So if you don't have a dessert uh, for dinner or lunch, mm. this is this is a nice option. Goes really well with raisins. Oh, with raisins, <laughs> with ice cream. I think my mum with vanilla ice cream. cream. Yeah, or on sh on trifle, English trifle. I think my mum put sherry in trifle. I want to try that. Yeah, my mum's... I don't like trifle, but my mum's trifle is very, very good. I, 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 I am obsessed with your mother's trifle. Hmm. Maybe, when, maybe, maybe when they come over, we can have a cooking day here. You can do a paella. Yeah. You can do a trifle. Dad and I will just sit and drink on the sofa. <laughs> I will give her her paella. Yeah. I want my trifle. <laughs> bye and bye. Never, never the twain <laughs> shall meet. Um, so yes, um, also cookies. You, well, yeah, sweet things. But there's also a savoury thing you can do. I have used this in a similar way. It's not quite as good, but it almost works. Salads. No salads. Yeah, with with for example with with goat cheese and nuts. Ch salad. Yeah, that would work. Uh, yes, but I don't want the salad bit. Green leaves and Pedro Jimenez. Have another guess. What am I going to say? Think of British Christmases. Oh. It's, it's a type of cheese, not goat's cheese, but... Brexit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not European anymore, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, blue cheese. Oh. So it, it's not quite as good as port, but port and blue cheese is a classic combination. You have this... Are you sweet... sure? Yeah. The fact that you don't know that is quite sad. You should go outside. I don't. I don't like blue cheese. Oh, that's true. You can't eat it. No. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't know. <laughs> it's a classic pairing. You have the sweet, alcoholic, you know, wine, pairing it with this salty, punchy cheese, and it goes quite well with PX. So if you've got a bottle of Pedro Jimenez, have a go. Got some blue cheese, Stilton Rockfort. I did it with Cabrales one year, and it goes pretty good because it cuts through all that saltiness with this bit of sweetness arguably maybe a bit too sweet but have a go craig i need a piece of burnt mm. spanish cheesecake from la vina now do you know la vina well yes i've heard about that cheesecake for those of you who have no idea what craig is smoking it's a place 
It's a place, uh, it's a little bakery in San Sebastian where you have to go like, when, as soon as they open and be like, give me a cherry cake. Apparently they're incredible. Dad says you don't waste good sherry on trifle. Oh, very good. I agree. But never, never make a trifle without sherry you would never drink. I also agree. They're British, they'll drink anything. <laughs> um, yes. As you always say. <laughs> Until the water on the streets. In the puddles, yeah. <laughs> well, in the streets. So, yes. Um, right. What should we do now? Well, do you want to try and talk about... What should we go for? Let's, let's so go for the... Do. I think... Uh, let's go for... Let's jump to the to the story of the winery and the winemaker. Wow. Wow. Clem, <laughs> does sherry last long in the bottle after it's opened? Yeah, this stuff, this stuff never goes off. Um, <laughs> yes. How is it best stored? Well, the beauty of sherry is they usually come with a pop top. So, yeah. you just pop back in. In the fridge. That's yeah. it. Um, in, the, right. in, the fr- in the fridge, I mean, this, this can or last in the for snow, weeks. in the snow for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no. Now, Rocky, I want you to choose what you think is the best photo of Alvaro de Mexico. I found, I found about yes. three. Uh, yeah, I, Some I of have are seen, and I'm a little bit scary of the... One of these ones here? Uh, yeah. Is that well, a, this, this is very... <laughs> what a man. What a man, what a man. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Look at that ridiculous stereotype. I love it. Alvaro de Mec is, and this is more current, <laughs> this is more today. Um, Alvaro de Mec is, well, that's it. Al- Alvaro de Mec is. Oh, look at him. Oh! oh. <laughs> what a legend. I love it. This is the most Spanish Andalus man in the world. So the winery is from 1850. It was originally, f- that's, that's a better photo. There you go. Um, the winery is originally from 1850. It was founded by Pilar Aranda. And she was actually the first woman bodega, bodeguera and the first winemaker of Jerez, female. Um, but then it went out of business or it tra- changed hands, better to say. And in 1999, this marvellous beast, <laughs> Alvaro de Mec, Don Alvaro de Mec. Is the same, is the same horse? I think this might be the same horse. Yes. I think it's the same it's horse. The same, it's the same horse. Well, I mean... Triumpho is called Triumph. I cannot make the difference from a horse to another one. You're a horse racist. <laughs> they all look the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. So he's part of this legendary Domek lineage. Um, and he used to be a right? rejoneador. Yes. He was a, uh, a horseback bullfighter. So yeah. I know some people don't like bullfighting. Fine. But you have to take it with a pinch of salt. This is Andalusia. It's quite common down there. So don't be like, I'm never and it's not the this topic wine. today. Yeah, so <laughs> chill out and shut up and drink the wine. So he used to be a horseback uh, bullfighter and he loves his horses. And if you've ever been to Jerez um, or you just Google Jerez cultura, you know, culture Jerez, horses are a big, big, big deal. No. So that's why this range of his it's sherries... It's like a triangle of, I mean, bulls, bulls horses, horses, and ham. and ham and wine. No, it's not a triangle. That's a, that's that's a, a square. F- famously a square. <laughs> <laughs> famously a square. <laughs> or do a, do a Venn diagram and in the center is Alvaro de Mec. Um, so his horses are his passion and his life. So this range, the new labels are all like um, uh, an homenaje, an homage to his horses. This one is Triumpho, Triumph. But remember, these are bullfighting horses. Don't think, oh, horse racing. No. These are the horses that rejoneros, rejoneadores will be atop to fight the bulls. So that's the images. And the winery, I mean, there's a couple of photos I've got. It's not the biggest. It's quite a small, I guess kind of a boutique-y one. There's not much online. It's not not a very, it's not one of the big boy uh, wineries. This, This is the small... Sala de Barricas, or the Sala de Solera, the, the Solera room. And this is the literally the only nice photo of the little courtyard when you go in. It's a very small, I guess the word is boutique kind of yeah. winery. It's not one of the ginormous ones like uh, González Bias or, or Luz, well, not Rostal, or Barbadillo, for example, these big boys. You, this is a small you, one. You've been there a couple of times? No, I mean to Jerez. To Jerez. Oh, uh, four times? Four times. I think. Um, uh, and... and... If you if you want to choose, I mean, if, if you if you are there for a couple of days and you want to visit the winery, what would be your first choice? I mean, if you want to get into the just sherry, one winery, or, yes, the first the first choice, what would it be? There's two. There's two. Um, okay, well, there's three ways you can do it. The obvious one is go to the biggest, most famous, 
most tourist friendly, impressive, blah, blah, styles. Gonzalez Vias, for example. You go there, amazing visit, very well run. It's a little bit commercial. Hey, everyone on the tourist train. You're <laughs> like, what? Such a big place to drive you around. It, it, but it's a good visit. You, it teaches you quite a lot. It shows you a lot. So that's a good visit, if not very romantic. But if you want like a, I don't know anything, go. Because also you'll see the Tio Pepe stuff. You're like, ah, Tio Pepe. It'll give you a, little, a nice introduction. The second one is um, to find a slightly smaller winery. But then they might not have a very good visit. Maybe they don't speak English as well, or at all, maybe. P probably do, but maybe not. Um, or the third one, which is always a golden rule if you're traveling to a wine region, go to the place that makes the wine that you've tried and you like. Okay, so if that, yeah, that's a good So if you're in New York choose. and you go, uh, you know, I like, yeah. oh, I always drink Barbadillo. Well, then try and get to Barbadillo because you'd be like, ah, now I can find the wine. Because the process is the same everywhere. Mm. Those are the three options. So I usually do the third one. What do I like? And I want to go and say hello. But then I'm speaking from like a, a professional <laughs> seller, so it's easier for me. But though, but then if you're if you're fresh off the boat from Chicago, so or the, the Germany, Disneyland of uh, Sherry is, is Gonzalez. Gonzalez Bias for Jerez is a yeah. It's those, a T Rex those. ride of the. <laughs> it's the it's the log it's the, the water slide <laughs> of. Of, of sherry, of sherry. <laughs> but it's like you're sharing that slide with 50 other people <laughs> but it is very impressive definitely worth to go there well i would i would love to visit one of these small ones like this uh, domek yeah Domecq. i want to meet Pedro Domecq, alvaro Al alvaro is the other one yeah i want to meet him um so yeah that's a little bit about the bodega well uh as you can see for oh, and you can uh, Imagine for the color of this wine, this is a white grape. <laughs> Pedro, Pedro Jimenez is a white grape, and uh, I think it's time to talk a little bit about the grape. What is happened it, here? Is it my time? Yes. Right. Well, I want to, I have things to say about uh, Pedro Jimenez as well. Pedro Jimenez. Pedro first, Jimenez. Things, first things first. The elephant in the room, the horse called Triumph in the room. The name. It's a very strange name. Pedro. <laughs> what? We don't exactly know what's happening here. But the assumption is this grape probably uh, came from the Rhine Valley in Deutschland, in Germany, maybe in the 16th century. It was brought here by a man or a, or a monk or a soldier. There's always different, or a viticulturist. There's always different things called Pedro Jimen or Ximen. And Shimon in old Castellano is Simon. So it was actually Peter Simon was his name. Whether or not we know this to be true, there are writings of a Pedro Shimon as a person in the 17th and 18th century, so it could be true. But either way, it's not an original grape from Spain. It's likely an old variety from the Rhine, which is no longer used there, but was brought to Andalusia area which is why the areas where you usually find it are Andalusia, Malaga, this kind of thing. Although, weirdly, there are some plantings. I mean, there's some in La Mancha, but in Galicia, we've seen Palomino used to blend into, into wines as well. So, traditionally um, used in Spain to make sweet wines, as you can see. I'll talk about the process a little bit later. Uh, I think after this, we'll talk about Jerez a little and then I'll go back and talk about how they make it but first of all just the grape so traditionally it's used to use uh, to uh, like, traditionally it's used to make sweet wines part of that a little bit like its sister uh, Moscatel is because it has very high levels of sugar so it is just very good for making sweet wines down in the south if you choose to make a still white wine you may notice that even though it's a still normal white wine, you might find it still has a lot of alcohol. It's a very high sugar level grape. Ergo, it was better for making sweet wines. However, this is a Jerez wine from Jerez, which Roque will go over shortly. But it has to be mentioned that the vast majority, I think like 90, 95% of all Pedro Jimenez that is used to make sherry from Jerez is actually planted 
in Montier Morillas yeah. in Cordoba. It's the, it's, the, it's the top grape there in that area. And actually, uh, David, who's drinking Alvear, that's a Montilla Morillas. Yeah. Um, so what happens is, because the climate is better for Pedro Jimenez in Montilla, it's warmer, it's drier, less humid. What happens is there's a historic agreement between Montilla and Jerez. Hmm. So basically, Montilla make the grapes and then Jerez just buy them. And make sherry with it. So and put the name. It's very po- very probable that this wine is made from grapes planted in Montilla Moriles in Cordoba, but the wine is finished and it's a bit like port. You know, you grow the grapes inland in the Douro Valley, and then you make the wine in Porto. Similar kind of concept. Right. Anything else I could say? They're very very sweet. More on that later. And yeah, there's loads of stories as to where the name comes from. <laughs> by the way, so it's anyway. sun dried. The Asoleo process. So the grapes are harvested and they are left in the ground under the sun for how long? I don't know. Until they get into grapes. I think it depends. I would That's imagine. Why they have this extraordinary concentration of sugar. Yeah, I would imagine it's going to be a, you know, a couple of weeks. I think it depends where you're going. I think we've got a photo of it, actually. Yeah. Um, cause it, it's very. They do it in Malaga as well. Um, so this is them preparing it. I think I've got another one somewhere uh, of them actually out. So this is when they, as soon as you put them out, you put them in, all the workers lay them out, and then you take away everything and you leave them to basically, oh, you can see us in the, in the background. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, and they start drying out. So you're, it's called the pacificación, the, 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 the turning into grapes. <laughs> Sorry, raisins. The raisinification of, of the Pedro Jimenez. So then you basically... It's not quite as shriveled as the ones we have here, but it's a hard job because the more you go through, you know, the hotter it's going to be for you to work in there and the drier it's going to be. You can see them here as well. Good Lord. That, that's, see, that's when they're getting towards actual raisins now. Not quite as shriveled as the ones we've got here, but we're looking at essentially making raisin wine. So you, when you've got these raisins, you pick them, well, you collect them, and then you will go through the process of extracting the juice as if you would with any wine. But of course, because these grapes have shriveled quite considerably and dried out quite considerably and all the lovely, you know, waters evaporated off, although the sugar is concentrated, which is fantastic, what you want, there's going to be far less actual liquid to then ferment into alcohol. And another problem is because of the insanely high levels of sugar, (laughs) It's actually very, 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 very hard to ferment it into alcohol. Yep. So generally so the initial wine is quite weak. 212 grams per liter of sugar. Yeah, and that's the, that's the low end. That's, that's the starting level, Yeah, right? they can go to 300 or 400, <laughs> which is insane. So it's like, I mean, how, how many liters? Is this just 75? So if this were a one liter, uh, I know there's, gonna, there's a minimum of 200... Mm. grains of sugar yeah it's, it's worse than most sweets <laughs> it's probably the sweetest wine in the world right mm, almost but we'll talk about that later because we have a question about it okay good old fabio <laughs> good for something yes there are other sweet wines similar sweetness but this is one one of the family of these other sweetest yeah now i would suggest um to talk a little bit about... Yeah, do you want to talk about the region a little bit? I want to talk about the region And then I can go back always. and talk about how to actually make Pedro Jimenez sherry, which is different to just making raisins. Well, we are in the south of Spain now. No, uh, we're not. We're in Madrid. Ha, 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 ha. Sh- I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the province of Cadiz. Um, or as the British call it, Cadiz. 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 <laughs> And this this uh, sherry area uh, includes the, f- I mean, any municipality included in the area is famous. Mm. Uh, Jerez de la Frontera, Boom. Puerto de Santa Maria, Boom. Chipiona, Boom. Trebujena, Rota, Puerto Real, Chiclana de la Frontera, and Lebrija. Craig will know about Rota. A- yeah, Craig, Craig was born there. I think, I think he was, <laughs> all of was his it? family come yeah. from Rota. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, this is what Craig, Craig, Craig please. you'll insult us in a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the weather is one of the main characteristics and probably is one of the main ingredients of the wines, mm-hmm. the weather. It's warm and it has 
extreme Atlantic influences. Uh, actually, Cadiz is that city, you know, where the heat in summer is felt more. Yeah, it's so, it's like heavy. Yeah. The average temperature is 17.5. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> the average temperature uh, it's but it's like also the, yeah. it's, it's, the rainfall is 600 millimeters uh, which is not bad it gets quite a lot of Jerez the, the wine area gets quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of rain yeah. and the other ingredient of the sherry wines is the soil the soil yeah. famously uh, known as Alvariza some photos of it actually I think um, sorry I'm eating I'm eating raisins <laughs> I, I have some photos of the soil there. Um, yeah. This is the key thing of this area. Um, Albariza, well, Alba is white in um, in Latin. So you have this very calcareous soil. Um, and this is very important because you'll see that it acts essentially as a big sponge. Um, this soil is basically this sort of shimmering white um countryside and basically it's gonna soak up all of the rain that you're gonna get in the months when it falls you know autumn uh spring these kind of two shoulder regions and it's gonna keep those vines alive when it gets that high summer and if you go there when it is harvest season oh you can see in this photo here it's beautiful you have this very white soil in the whole world <laughs> is a little glowing. Um, it's quite desolate in, <laughs> in 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 the off months. It's a bit dead looking when the vines die. It's all just like pale brown. <laughs> but in um, in the growing season, it's quite beautiful. But that soil, that high chalky calcareous soil, is absolutely one of the key aspects that, that that make sherry possible yeah well the uh famous uh grape of this area the mm. most popular one is palomino palomano which palomino. you you ruined for me once because you told me what it means in spanish oh yeah you don't want to know you that. don't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If, if you don't want our channel cancelled yeah in... <laughs> join us for that information on the only fans account <laughs> Uh, well, but you can find also there are three different Palominos: Palomino Fino, Palomino de Jerez, and Palomino. Yeah, I'd love to see if anyone. I'm sure there are no differences. But you know how this is the way to call the attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. Look at me. <laughs> We're different. You're the same. We're different. <laughs> but in this, you know how we have so Lustau has those three. <coughs> Sorry, a little bit of coronavirus. Um, <laughs> They have those finos en rama, the tres en rama. And there is fino puerto, fino Santa Maria. So yeah. the, the grapes will react differently, but I'd be the same grape. There's also allowed Pedro Jimenez, but also Muscat. Mm. Muscatel is allowed. Which in, is the smallest of the lot. And no red wines, no red grapes. Mm. Is, is it the only wine region without red wines? I think Could be. Rias Could Baixas be. has none in the DO. I think. I think Rias Baixas is 100% Albariño. I think it's very strict. I think. Don't quote me on that. But I think that I level of... I have to check strict, that. Mm. I have to check that. But, uh, but Jerez is very strict. Probably could be one of the... Uh, or the only one or one of the few uh, denominaciones de origen without red wines. Mm. Um, right. Anything else? Yes. We're running out of time here. Production. Mm. Like Daracat. <laughs> okay. I thought coming here... Rocky's house on a snowy Wednesday evening we would es escape <laughs> all right come on then okay the production is quite high it's 44 mm. million liters Whoa, of wine. That is a lot. Yeah, yeah. and the commercialization okay this. No, this is interesting okay 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 so on one hand I'm thinking there's gonna be a lot of international but on the other hand, a lot of that is historically the sweet stuff. But then nobody in Spain drinks sherry. I'm going to say... <laughs> 73% international, 27%. Okay. Close, but 62. 62 oh, national, 
No, no, I was completely the opposite. I was completely wrong. <laughs> 62 national okay. and the rest international. Okay, well, that's better. That's it's, better. It's, a, it's a very it's only people difficult to explain why. Yeah, it's tricky. We, we, ha we have in our shop the sherry tasting, which is very popular. Please, if you're living in Madrid, come and do it. 62 national, 38 international. Yeah. Okay. Well, Anything else? Probably all the creamy wines Thank you, pardon. <laughs> all right <laughs> well uh quickly i think we've got a photo here because now i can quickly before because we're running out of time here we've been talking so much i think i've got one here it's the different types of wine Tipos de Jerez. there you go very quickly then i will do my what they call the elevator pitch i will do my sherry in five seconds these are the types of sherry on the top fino amontillado what a, this is okay i love this this is a terrible picture it's all over the place <clears throat> so fino amontillado Oloroso, Palo Cortado, and in the bottom right, Manzanilla, okay? Those are the dry styles. Then you'll see at the bottom, medium cream, uh, those, and the pale cream in the, in the top right. Those are sweet styles, which are sweetened versions. So pale cream is a sweetened version of Fino. Medium is a sweetened version of Amontillado. Cream is a sweetened version of Oloroso. And then you had... Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel. So there's the different types of sherry. Very, 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 very quickly. As we've said, you make raisins, then you make liquid, then you ferment that liquid, and it gets very unalcoholic, 6% alcohol, and then you fortify it, this one, to 15% alcohol, okay? Same as port, you crank up the booze. Mwah, delicious. Then you add it to what they call the Solera system, I think... Oh, good luck finding this one, Rocky. Uh, <laughs> good luck. We have a, a picture of the Solera, the system of the oh, yeah. blending. It's there somewhere. Um, this is what makes sherry, sherry. You have uh, an imaginary... Well, no, we can see here. But imagine you have a layer of, of, of barrels. In the example I've got here, there's just three layers. Um, what you're going to have is this, what they call fractional blending process, okay? So, the new wine that I make that year... You know, my grape, uh, my raisin wine, I fortify it to 15% and I put it in the very top layer. Um, and the wine that I'm going to bottle that year, I will take from the bottom layer. So imagine I'm going to make some uh, wine bottles uh, full of lovely booze. I will take it from the bottom layer, which is also called the Solera layer. I will only empty these about uh, to leaving about a third left. So then I'm missing some wine in that Solera layer. So then I go to the Primera Criadera, the first nursery, which is the second layer up, and I'll take some wine down into the bottom layer to refill it. But then I'm missing wine in number one, so then I go up to number two, and I take wine down, and so on and so forth, until you get to that very top layer, which is where I put the new wine. So this wine spends about five years, on average, going through this, what they call Solera system. This is called fractional blending, and this is why there's no vintage on this wine. It's always blended. Now, sometimes they can be very old, very complex systems. This is just a basic representation. Um, if you want to find out more, go to my Luke Darracott YouTube channel, The Gastro Traveller, and watch my video. But this is a blended actually, wine. Actually, we have a beautiful cherry Oh, yes, on our website. Masterclass in Me our website. talking for half an hour. In our channel, in our YouTube channel. So uh, stop sending people to your personal channel and drive them to, <laughs> to yeah, the company. Yeah, sorry. Companies. Ignore me. Go to the company channel. Um, so Dad says, what actually goes into Fortify? It's a, uh, uh, it's a distilled grape spirit. So you use, you know, you can distill from the, from the grape skins and, and just get like a, a colorless, odorless booze. The same thing you would use to make brandy. So that's a very quick, very quick, it might be quite confusing, show of what happens to make the PX style, not to make the other styles of sherry. But this is a... A, a raisin wine that is four to five to fifteen percent that is passed over an average of five years through this blending system called the Solera system. Erkin Ismail asks, uh, so they turn into raisins? Yes. That was half an hour ago, Rocky. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if anyone has any other questions, now is the time because we only have a few minutes left. Let me just check our. What actually th Instagram. goes into forty five? I just said it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Never listens to me. Uh, no questions on the Instawebs. Um, Okay. So yes, if no one has any questions, um, that's fine. I mean, we hate you, but fine, it's fine. Um, well, as you can see, this is Luke's favorite wine, favorite wine region. Yeah. 
and he could be hours and hours speaking and I don't recommend you that. So it's it's wonderful to have. You that. literally just said, go to our channel and watch me for half an hour. And now you're going, it's boring, don't do it. Make your mind up. Hours and hours. You could you could talk hours. I could. Oh, I love Sherry so much. I don't like you. And I, I love you. Look. What, a, what a way to start the year. <laughs> now, Rocky, what can they, what is the prize? Oh, interesting fact, in Cyprus, they make a spirit from raisins. Oh, I want to try that. Now, I mean, I mean, I th I'm pretty sure this is a very Mediterranean thing, uh, yeah. Because in 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 Italy, have they have similar things as well? Well, I've made a list here. Our last fact, <clears throat> but a wonderful question from a terrible person. Uh, <laughs> Fabio asked us, "How does Pedro Jimenez stack up against other sweet wines of the world?" So Rocky said. About two hundred and twelve. Two hundred twelve is the minimum. Is the minimum, and then it goes up to whatever. So I've got a little list of eight classic sweet wines in no order. Moscato, the disgusting fizzy crap from Italy. I mean, wonderful wine. Moscato is about 90 to 120 grams per liter. Tokai, minimum 60, but it can go up to 450 grams. So it can get the same level of sweetness, even sweeter sometimes. Gold price. Yeah. <laughs> Sauterne is not as uh, sweet, 120 to 220 Bergen Auschleser Riesling, <laughs> ninety to two hundred and twenty. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, ice wine. Ice wine. I love ice wine. I don't like ice wine as much, um, unless they're really good. So that M de Alejandro in our shop is. Ooh. Anyway, but the the, the Gramona's Gebustramina. That's. Really I've not good. tried it yet. Oh, it's beautiful. I've not tried it yet. But it's one hundred and twenty to two hundred and twenty grams. It's a nice amount of sweetness. The Rutherglen Muscat, which is a similar kind of idea, but it's an Australian sort of style. 200 to 400 plus grams as well, so it's also one of the sweetest. Recciotto della Val Policella, 110 to 200. And Vintage Port, it's actually one of the least sweet, actually, Port, 90 to 140 grams. So Sherry PX is part of the trilogy Tokai, Rutherglen Muscat, and PX is the sweetest. I sent an email through the website and didn't have a reply about buying the January box. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll look a bit later. <laughs> Anyone else want a question about the business? <laughs> the I'll have a look later. That's, I don't remember the name. The, the Cypress. Cypress. 60 to 70 was an alcohol. Whoa. Whoa. That's a lot of alcohol. Do you have any? <laughs> I and don't think that is wine. Can you come to the shop <laughs> and can we try it? Um, so, but yes. We, we, we are gonna we are gonna go for that email. I don't remember that email. No, actually. No, no. I'll check if it's in spam. Sometimes yeah. through the system because yeah. of thing. Um well, first of all, welcome back again. Welcome um, back. We do have a prize for this month, but maybe we should show it on the next tasting, we show it in person. Um but yeah. Uh hopefully the next tasting will be Sunday. Yes, and this Sunday. Probably we can be back in the shop. By yes, then. probably. Um so I don't have to take insults. <laughs> from you in your own living room yeah which is a big pleasure yeah for you. um so yes thank you for joining us again uh, for those of you who bought the box already and were lucky enough to get it before the snows yes well done and for the rest of you happy new year happy new year <laughs> and for the rest of you who have bought the box which is still on sale uh we as soon as the, as soon as the roads are clear yeah. and for those arrive. living in madrid beware when you walk on the streets <laughs> it's uh, a little bit risky mm. Right, should we go? And well, look, Derek, I see mm. you. I'll see you. What is it? I've not seen you for a week. Yeah. So I'll see you, I guess, tomorrow. Tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, for all of the. All, oh, oh, it's here. <laughs> it's really weird doing this out of the shop. I'm like, where is all the things? <laughs> Why are there raisins? Bye. Ciao, guys. <laughs>